Welcome back. In the last video, we created a smaller subset of the entire Food 101 data set. And we do this because we want to make sure our experiments run quickly. We could jump in and start modeling on the entire Food 101 data set, but I'd like to leave that as an extension for you to try. So to begin, before we deploy a model to Hugging Face Spaces, Food Vision Big, we're going to train an FNET B2 feature extractor on 15,000 or just over 15,000 training images and evaluate it on 5,050 testing images. So now we're up to turning our Food 101 data sets into data loaders. So let's import Torch. This one, I gave you the challenge of giving it a shot in the last video. It may have tripped you up a little bit because previously we've used our going modular script to do this, to create our data loaders, data setup.py. However, because our data sets are in the form of data sets right now, well, that doesn't really, it makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't really, but it does. Uh, we can't use our create data loaders function that we've used previously because these are already data sets. They're not in folders. We don't have to import them. So we can go the old traditional route and that's by creating a batch size of 32 and then we can create the food 101 20% training data loader by going train data loader food 101 20% equals torch dot utils dot data dot data loader. Oh, we haven't typed that in a while. And then we can pass in the data set. So if I push shift tab here, we should get a doc string. There we go. The data set is, our torch data set is of course our train data food 101 20%. And then what's next? Our batch size is equal to, our batch size will stick with 32. If you do get a memory error when we're working with such a large data set, you can lower your batch size. So you could go divided by two or something like that. That's one way to, if you, if you ever get like a GPU memory error, lowering the batch size is one way to handle that. But we should be fine with a batch size of 32. And then we're gonna go shuffle equals true. We wanna shuffle the training data. Finally, we'll set number of workers. Maybe we'll do it to, hmm. I like to set it to import OS. And let's go, num workers equals, now this is a heavily debated topic. If we go import OS of what to set it to, CPU count, usually it's two per GPU that you have access to. Yeah, two. So, or, or four, so between two and four is usually a good value or one. So it's default zero. Uh, one is also a good value, two, another good value. And then four is also apparently a good value. So the reason why I know this is because if you go PyTorch, what to set num workers to. Now, of course, this is very experimental. It will differ on the hardware. It will differ on guidelines for assigning num workers, guidelines for assigning num workers, PyTorch num workers, a speedy tip for, a tip for speedy training. Yeah, they said the best value is two, but yeah, there's some arguments. This is not very practical. I'll let you read more into that. But the rule of thumb that I've kind of found is two per GPU and CPU count, we've got two CPUs. So again, experiment with this. We're gonna stick with using two for now. And then let's go create food 101. Uh, I'm gonna put up here 20%. 20% uh, testing data loader, that is. So test data loader, food 101, 20% equals torch.utils.data.data loader. Then of course the data set is test data, food 101, 20%. Oh guys, we're getting so close to training our biggest model yet batch size, and then we're not gonna shuffle the testing data, we don't need to. False, that doesn't need to be all caps, but the next one does, num workers equals num workers. Beautiful, and I'm just gonna put a little note here, 
So this value is very experimental, just like all, many different hyperparameters in machine learning, right? And, and the best value will differ depending on the hardware you're using. Search PyTorch num workers setting for more. And of course, if you wanted to find out in the documentation, what does that actually do? Well, let's Google this. This is what I do to learn things, learn more things. Where do we have num workers? There we go. So PyTorch provides an easy switch to perform multi-process data loading by simply setting the argument num workers to a positive integer. So zero will not use multi-process data loading, but setting it to a value above zero, so any positive integer, will start to use multi-process data loading. However, what I've found is that it saturates at a certain point. So once you get over four, again, this will be very experimental in my experience, over four it kind of, the returns are diminishing, but it will depend on the hardware you're using. So just keep, keep that in mind. We'll get out of all this extra jazz. Beautiful, let's create some data loaders. Now we'll check the length of these to see how many batches we have. And then len Beautiful, so we have 474 batches of about 32. There might be some overlap for the training data loader and 158 batches of uh, images for the testing data loader. So I think we've got all the pieces of the puzzle ready to start training. In fact, you might wanna give that a go. So in the next video, let's work together to train our biggest model yet, training food vision big. Beautiful. So we've got all the scripts ready to go for that and going modular. Engine.py is where you want to look. So give that a shot. Train the biggest model we've ever trained so far. And I think five epochs should be enough because it might take a little while to train. But we'll see that in the next video.